Today's guest is a friend of mine. He, we were both kind of in the bodybuilding world at the same time. Uh, we were both coming up in uh, NPC bodybuilding, and we talk a lot about nutrition. We talk a lot about uh, training. We talk about his clients. We talk about the good, the bad, and whatever else there is, um, and how he got to where he's at right now. Um, he has a great story towards the end of how he came from nothing and made himself something because of his passion and that's what i love i love that mindset mentality and um because what do we say around here mindset is everything so um really take a good listen to today's guest my friend kyle smith it's it's my foundation it's my faith, it's my work ethic, it's my drive, it's everything that I've tried to build for myself that has made me who I am. So to start off, just like explain a little bit about like uh, like what you've been up to, what kind of stuff that you're doing, um, like what do you do as a profession? Absolutely. So. Um, I'm Kyle Smith. I'm the owner of Full Access Fitness 24-7. I launched my business in 2018 when I left Above Beyond Physiques to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a definitely a great experience I had with Fred Smalls for the past almost seven years. Um, I felt it was time for me to launch out and show my passion and my knowledge at a, at a not saying at a different level, just the way I want to express it. What's going on, everyone? Hope you're enjoying the podcast. And I just wanted to stop for a second and let you know about Strong Town Nutrition right here. Strong Town Nutrition is my supplement store. If you go to stnutrition.com, you can find out a lot more about what we're doing, what we carry, a little bit about us. And, you know, we're really trying to uh, get the supplements that we love to use out into the public. You know, there's so many things out there. Uh, especially in the fitness industry that all of you that aren't like um, familiar with that we really want to show you. So one of the products that I am loving right now is this Axe and Sledge supplement um, called The Grind and it's whiskey and cola flavor. So any of you whiskey drinkers out there, if you want to like put this in a cold glass, put it on ice, you know, it tastes delicious. Um so what this is, is actually BCAs, and BCAs help you recover. They help your, you repair your muscles that you're beating down during your gruesome workouts and all your virtual yoga and whatever you're doing, but definitely you want something that tastes good, you know? Why don't you, why don't you take a supplement that tastes good? Don't settle for something disgusting, and um you know, if you're a whiskey drinker, I would love if you let me know how this tastes and how similar it is to actual whiskey, because I'm not sure. <laughs> I just know it's delicious. So go to stnutrition.com and grab you Axe and Sledge, the grind, whiskey and cola. Now back to the show. Right. And um, for me to touch a lot of the people the way I wanted to and, and, and uh, individualize things how I wanted to make it fit, mm -hmm. right? So I did that in 2018, but prior to that, I was bodybuilding. And um, 2015 is when I was getting ready for my last competition, and then I realized I was like kind of getting burned out from bodybuilding. I wanted to get into involved in boxing because mm -hmm. I was remember I was messing around with a, a Dom Tiberi okay. at, at, his, at his body workshop with slap box and whatever, and he would give me a compliment on how I naturally hold my hands, and I felt kind of confident about how he was how he was trying to tell me how nat naturally I was at it. I was like, you know what? I might, I might try it out. It's not different. Right. Then whatever I do, I give it 100%, right? So mm -hmm. I instantly told Fred, I said, I know I'm like nine weeks out, but I don't want to do this shit no more. Right. I don't want you to do the protocols you got to use and all that stuff. I just mm -hmm. want to do something totally different. Right. And he was like kind of shocked by it, but he was, but he was supportive. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was eating like 4,000 calories, but I was around 220 at the time. And now in boxing, uh, muscle slows you down and right. cardiovascular and all that good stuff. So... I had to lose muscle and fat. So I went from eating around 4,000 calories down to like 1,850. Mm. And that was too big of a drop, I thought, on yeah. my part. Because it kind of threw off my digestive system. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a lot, of, a lot of shakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And changed my whole training regimen. And I was new to experiencing boxing conditioning. So I was trying to 
Another thing I saw people do, I tried to double it so I can catch up. Right. So I was doing a lot of running, a lot of road work, um, sparring, going to different gyms, trying to different styles, what would fit me better as far as like the atmosphere. And um, definitely um, fell into some gyms that were kind of using me as a punching bag. And then I heard about MVJ, which is uh, Professor Greg owns, which is an amazing mentor in combat training, by the way. And he put under his wing in his training camp. And you had to, to make the team, you had to make fight team. So you had to go sparring, training, you know, consistently day in, day out. And then you got to go ahead and go through the whole, um, um, pretty much like a, it's like a match, but it's not, you don't, don't count your record, but you mm. had to make the team based on how adherent you were. Did you listen? Did you follow the instructions? Were you under pressure? Stuff like that. Make the team, all that type of stuff. So I was going through that type of uh, route, but I noticed and I was having a lot, I was getting dizzy a lot. Yeah. Every day I was getting dizzy and dizzy and dizzy and TMI body bleeding a lot when I go to the bathroom. I thought it was hemorrhoids from yeah. all the straining from lifting I did in the past. Right. But that was never the case. I remember I got my blood work done and they rushed me to the ER. I had um my human gluten levels was too low. Jeez. So they run a rush to get blood transfusions done. They put me on this depository. They're trying to explain that my my that my my intestinal tract was so inflamed my body couldn't hold nutrients. I was deficient. Mm. Iron, B twelve, also um um wasn't able to handle fiber at all. So I had to literally cut back on training. I had to stop the whole boxing journey I wanted to do. Because I kind of wanted to go back to bodybuilding. I was like, damn, well, you know what? This is a little easier for me. Mm-hmm. As in, I already knew the swing of things of training and how to right. lift. Yeah. But my my uh, gut health was so far off mm-hmm. that I took almost about six months off in training completely and just focused on growing my business. Mm-hmm. And then the problem with that was I was so involved in growing my business that I Client, I was very grateful. People already knew how it was as a yeah. trainer. And, and once people heard about me having a business, they want to try me out and experience it. So mm-hmm. I grew my business rapidly too quickly to yeah. the point where I had a ton to work out. So now people, people don't, who don't know who I am were like, is this a trainer? Because I, I didn't fit the part because right. I went from battling gut issues where I couldn't train like that. I was on medicine, medication. I lost a lot of my size from boxing. Yeah. And then I'm already 168 pounds. And now I'm looking shape on top of it. So it's very depressing. Yeah. But, um, then I managed to slowly get back to training again, take my basic supplements, my creatine, my protein shake, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Get my eating better, understand that, the focus on controlling the type of carbs I eat. Also, make sure that my fiber intake is under 20 grams a day right. that I can sustain. Make sure my protein uh, uh, was adequate on to the goal that I was trying to achieve at the time. And I try to get back on track, but um, so back to so speed things up now. Um, um, Solo doing my business, mm-hmm. doing on uh, nutrition, training, specialized in physique composition, um, biomechanics, functional anatomy. So a lot of people hired me just to um, build up the lacking body parts. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where uh, me and Carlos fell, in, fell involved with because I was helping Fred train him back in 2014. And uh, Carlos went to um, Dave Palumbo, had him for a while, and Dave was already a mentor of mine. Mm-hmm. And then Carlos went went with um, Dorian, Dorian Ham- Hamilton, who's right. out of Canada, which yep. is a great coach. Me and him see eye to eye on everything. Mm-hmm. What makes it a lot easier on me because when it comes to training, I, the, the nutrition hacks to match your stimulus. So right. if, you, if I don't know how you're eating, it's kind of hard to know how I can push you right. without you having crazy cortisol spikes and stressing out your hormones and all that crazy shit. So mm-hmm. kind of made sure I, I knew what he was eating to right. know how to, I could train him so he can recover. Right. And Dorm was okay with me seeing how he was, what he was eating and stuff like that, his protocols and everything. So I knew how to go about his regimen. Right. So, um, but yeah, so me and Cards linked up um, 2018. Towards the end of 2018, 19, and then we've been together ever since, and we've been mm. making crazy progress. Um, now we get ready for nationals. Um, me and him, like brothers, really close. And uh, me and his coach, his nutrition coach, Dorian Hamilton, me and him see eye to eye, which made things great because Regan Grimes reached out to me for trying to try out my programs. Okay. And, and yeah, I put yeah. on through a leg workout that he did. Yeah, with. I saw that. I was like, what? Are, I was like, what? Are, I wonder what he's doing with Regan because uh, that dude, man, he's coming up. Yeah, man, he's a he's a very humble um, athlete. I put yeah. it that way. I did a we had a Facetime meeting a few weeks ago before we legit started, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, this guy might be a cocky guy. He'll cut me real short and won't try to explain to him. And he was willing to listen. He opened up, asked questions, mm-hmm. which is very um, different because. And he's somebody who has a huge following base. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody wants to work with him. Everyone wants to get that credibility, right? Mm-hmm. So for him to open up and ask me questions and me give him my two cents, he's real willing to take it in. Right. And I give him a chest and a leg workout to try and to see if he liked it. He'll be back, says, probably the best work I ever had in my life. 
I never train that way. I just go heavy and go to failure. Yeah. I never worry about metabolic stress, mechanical tension, all that. They focus mm-hmm. on structuring his program to fit his uh, goal and needs because he wanted to bring up his quads and hamstrings, upper chest, mm-hmm. and, and throughout the of his back, and we managed to do that. By pulling through a program, he's already developed. He's already seen progress, mm-hmm. and we check in weekly. Hey man, how you feeling? What's going on? Did your diet change a little bit? Yeah, it did. You took my carbs down a little bit, my fats, whatever. So I know how much volume I can give him, where it's not too much that he can't recover because he is pushing like nine weeks out, eight weeks out. Right, so, right. And now we're uh, battling trying to link up in Canada because you know this whole COVID shit yeah. kind of threw things off. So. I'm in the middle of getting my passport situated so I can fly out there when things are ready to go. Mm-hmm. That would like a poem through his uh, training camp th- throughout Spain. Uh, Arnold Spain is what he's doing. Okay. And then Olympia. Right. Because Boston Pro got canceled. So his next shot is Chicago Pro and then potentially Arnold Spain and then Olympia. So we already got things set up for that. But Carlos is uh, doing national end of the year. He's put on crazy size. So yeah. I think with me working with Carlos, kind of opened up others to reach out to me, like Nick Walker. Mm-hmm. I put him through a leg training Um like a month or so ago. Okay. He threw, he threw all over the place and doing the first exercise. Yeah. It was crazy. So I think um, what I've experienced as far as training bodybuilders at that level is it lets other people know it's okay to like reach out to somebody who is specialized in biomechanics and functional anatomy who yeah. might not be a professional bodybuilder. Right. Because most people have rather listen to somebody who's huge, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Never realize that his kids got him huge. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. It's like, like look at Chris Ocito. Yep. I, mean, I don't think he works out anymore. Yeah. Probably 20 years. But yeah, he has one of the best athletes in the world. Yeah, so exactly. clearly his knowledge, his knowledge and experience with athletes speaks mm-hmm. for itself as right. volume goes. Right. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. But I'm actually getting ready to um, do a show next year in March. Okay. Um, Eric Madison, a brother to mine, passed away last mm-hmm. Tuesday. And his last show he's done with Baltimore Classic in 2014. Mm-hmm. And he got second in that show. And when it opened and then... No, no, so he got um, second novice, fifth in the open. Right. And my goal was to do that show and damage it and get first place and bring a trophy home for him. Yeah. So that's my goal for next year. So I'm trying to adjust my schedule because I spent so much time focused on building my business. Yeah. I'm very grateful to have over 100 clients of mine mm-hmm. for nutrition and personal training, but I'm one person. So I'm kind of spreading myself a little thin with that. But right. overall, things are going really great. Um, I have a great assistant, Corinne. She handles my schedule and the confirm my appointments, mm-hmm. consultations, reaching out to them, make sure that if they have any questions, please reach out to Kyle. Let's make sure you get things situated. Right. And all my clients, um, they're very, um, very understanding. Mm-hmm. So they know I have a, a really hectic lifestyle and they work with me and vice versa. I right. make sure everybody gets the attention they need. Nobody feels like they're waiting to hear back from me. Um, like Fridays and Saturdays is when I do my check-ins. So I'll do about... 45, 50 check-ins today, which is Friday, mm-hmm. and then another 45, 50 on Saturday. Right. And I can hand them all the same day. Okay. So everybody, so whoever some updates today, will get a plan today. Right. And Saturday, we'll get it Saturday. Not right. like waiting three or four days to get a response from a coach. Mm-hmm. That's not how I am because I'm big on data. I track right. progress. I ask questions. That way you feel comfortable. You want to see what's going on. You have any issues, I can address it and fix it then and now. Yeah. So that's my approach comes to um, for actually fitness 24-7 because my business 24-7. I handle... There are doctors, nurses, bodybuilders, other trainers, other coaches who reach out to me for advice on stuff. Mm-hmm. I handle it, explain things to them, how to go about things a little differently. Mm-hmm. Also, I have some prep coaches reach out to me. They might have a client who looking so good. It's crazy because like, I have some coaches reach out to me, but their client looking so good, they're scared to fuck it up the last yeah. four weeks. Right. Like, God, this guy looking so good. Don't know what more I can do to him. But like, yeah. what, what's he doing? I'm like, oh, add this, take this out, try this. Try this. Mm-hmm. And or I'm like, just keep what you're doing. It's clearly it's working. Don't fix, don't, don't, don't fix what's not broken, right? So I think that's another issue with a lot of coaches. Mm-hmm. That when their clients are looking too good, they get nervous. They're right. scared they don't fuck it up. Right. Clearly it's working. Don't change it unless you know it's time for him to either dry out or maybe he's real flat and not time to fill him out. So you might have to up his carbs a bit or you know, feed him with fat. So whatever the case may be to keep him full and hold it. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's really um, a blessing to have other people reach out to me. Right. Okay, because definitely. they feel like... Well, well, Kyle has been doing a lot on the low the throughout the past four or five years by just doing his thing. So that's why now I'm at a point where I do want to express, open up a YouTube channel and do mm-hmm. stuff like that. Just explain my knowledge because um, I'm very blessed to have the mentors I have mm-hmm. with N1 Education, Alan Kress, Chris Kassim, um, 
Paul Carter, James Krieger, they all are my mentors that I spend a lot of money on to yeah. just to get the information that I'm receiving to write down for my clients so they get maximum results. Right. All right. So there's a lot of stuff in there. A lot of, yeah, a lot man, of questions I got for you. <laughs> I know. I got a lot of questions I got for you. So, sure. So the gym itself, um, do you like pay to work, like train your people there, or is that your gym? All right. So the owner is also a mentor of mine, by the way, Scott McCarthy. Okay. He's the owner of Balance Strength Fitness Center over right here in Wilmington mm -hmm. on Lancaster Avenue. I um, lease uh, space to run my business. Okay. So I have my own All office. Right. I do my come make your body fat done, skin, skin full caliber. The personal training, nutrition check-ins, mm -hmm. all that. So I run space at his gym to run my business. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, how do your other clients feel uh, when they see you deal with like all these bodybuilders and stuff like that? Because I know when I used to train people, and even when they saw I was a bodybuilder, they were kind of intimidated. You know what I mean? So it kind of made it uh, a little difficult for them. You know what I mean? To even like train with me. Sure, sure. Because so how do how do your like um your clients just trying to lose weight that aren't really comfortable with their body? How do they deal with that? Awesome question. I get this. I'm not gonna lie to you, not exaggerating, probably weekly. That's why if you see my, my Instagram now, I made a lot of adjustments to it, know mm -hmm. what what I post. Because mm -hmm. people thought I only train professional athletes or just bodybuilders. Yeah. Because at the time I had my first Memphis Z uh, pro Malik, and then I was on uh, helping Nick Walker with his training mm -hmm. and then Carlos. So it kind of made people but like, oh, he must just do bodybuilders only. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Because, I mean, of course, people want to see impressive stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I treat all my clients the same. So I try to tell people, no, I don't do just do specializing in bodybuilding. I, I'm from A to Z. Right. You know, rehab, rehabilitation training, um, you know, functional, building strength, conditioning. They were just learning the principles of learning how to compound movements, isolation movements, how to make it fit your program mm -hmm. from all ages. So... It was challenging because, and again, people let's assume I only did athletes. Right. Because see these big people in training. Oh well, I don't really want to hire him. He might try to hurt me. Yeah. Not realizing this, I specialize in physique transformation. What the goal is? So mm -hmm. If you're trying to lose fifty pounds, a hundred pounds, clearly yes, nutrition involved in that for sure. But training as well, weight resistance training. Make sure that they're understanding you gotta lift weights. Mm -hmm. So at, at first it was kind of hard because I kind of only posted my athletes. Not was it intentional? It isn't how it happened. And so a lot of people would DM me, inbox me. Hey, I, I know you're a trainer, but I kind of just you want to do athletes. I was wondering, do you ever do this? People just want to lose weight or right. want to build train and feel good and learn the movements. Absolutely, that's the majority of my people was opposite. Right. I, don't, I only have a, I only do um um far as prep. I only have five athletes uh, per prep okay. because. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, me personally, it takes a lot of my time to really dig into them, to exactly. really help yeah. them. Because not seeing I babysit them, but I make pretty significant changes throughout the week, mm -hmm. depending on what's going on. And it's hard to manage 20, 30, 40 athletes in doing right. that. Because, you know, as you four weeks out, I'm dealing with three to four updates a week, mm -hmm. uh, carb loading, depletion, stuff like that. So for me to give them my best, I know I can't handle no one to five per prep personally. That's right. because I also handle a whole lot of other clients as well with other goals. Yeah. And I don't want nobody feeling like on the back burner waiting on me or they feel like they're planning to change, stuff like that. Right. But majority of my people are for weight loss. Yeah. It's it's, it's the opposite of what people think. Mm -hmm. But so the way I handle it, that's how I explain to them now, I specialize in physique transformation. So I'll customize programming. First I'll put you through a regimen, see where you're at, see if you have any limitations. Um, if you've ever even done training before, if you right. think, see what you're at before I designed your program. Right. So that's usually how I hit them every time. Like, let's do a console first. Let me see what your goals are. Let me get some questions out of you. And so I can understand what, where you're at in far as training, if you have any, have any experience of training. Right. But a lot of them, they do hit me with the first question is, do you only do athletes? And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I actually do more so weight loss. I was like, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get big. And yeah, yeah there's and things. I, would, and I, would, um, I do a lot of vegetarian clients too, by the way. Oh, wow. Not saying I, I, I preach that. I right. preach flexible nutrition. Right. But I do customize plans that, that along the, what are you going to be adhering to the most? Right. So I got clients who do amazing on keto, mm -hmm. clients who do amazing on just on mid low carb diets, paleo diets. But it's also something that they want to do too, right? right? Yeah. I don't, I don't pressure them to do anything. Right. So if you say, hey, Kyle, listen, I'm a vegetarian. It's part of my culture. This is how I've been eating all my life. Mm -hmm. I just want to make, make it more um, efficient in, in mm -hmm. a better way. Right. So, of course, I would not going to steer you the wrong way, but most of the vegetarians that I've dealt with, they tend to um, be deprived of protein. 
Yeah. They're actually under eating a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I have this one uh, client right now. She started at 124 pounds, naturally 132. And her whole thing was she was scared to gain weight. I said, no, you need to lift weights and eat more protein. Yeah. And then her body composition changed. She looking strong. She looking, she's strong, looking better. She has an overall balanced physique. And now she wants to do a bikini show. And that was never in her mind. Right. Right? So it's put into perspective for them. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is very important because a lot of them don't have the vision to see where they can get to because they never thought it was possible. So as a, as a coach or a trainer, I always look ahead. I look at your structure. I know where I can get you to as long as you are in here and listening, paying attention. So what do you do? Because this is something I dealt with. This has actually got me out of training is um, people that, you know, you're given all this time, all this effort. You're given over 100 percent and they're given 35. You know what I mean? Or they're not doing what you need them to do. Um, but they still have this goal like, oh, I want to lose weight. They talk about it all the time. But then when you're, you're giving stuff to them on a silver platter to do and they're just not doing it. Like, what do you, where's your mindset with that? Okay, so I do, um, fortunately, I don't really have too many like that because yeah. the way, because I specialize in food behavior, food cubes, and stuff like that. Okay. That way they understand the importance of nutrition. Mm -hmm. don't, I don't want to just tell them to eat chicken and rice, right? Right, yeah. Um, but those who are not really doing what I tell them to do, mm -hmm. I can almost tell easily. And I'm big on communicating with them. Mm -hmm. But with those who are like that, I, I, I nicely try to explain to them, listen, um, this is an investment in your health and your goal. And this is what I, this is what I do as my passion. So if I'm giving you my 110% and I'm truly caring for your needs, you're not giving me the expectations that I'm looking for, you might need to seek for another coach or maybe um, try another route. Yeah. Because, uh, again, I never push clients away. But if I give you my all, and I'm truly caring about your goal, mm -hmm. and I'm getting the opposite back from you, I have to address that like that because otherwise – it could be a wake up call. Oh shit! You know what? Let me get my shit together. Let me yeah. let me just do it. Sometimes I, I get a little pep talk, but those who just truly just fall off and don't communicate and they complain, hey, I'm not seeing results. I'm not really losing the weight. I'm paying monthly for this. I'm not really seeing a difference. They're the ones I tell them. Listen, you know what? The fact that you've done pretty much zero of what I'm telling you to do, you put off pie tracking like a fitness pal app or something. Yeah. <laughs> because isn't because my service is clearly not fitting. Fitting what you're able to com to communicate with. Right. I'm big on specializing in the in the individual. Mm -hmm. So if I'm giving you weekly check and checking on you every week, and I'm don't hear back from you until it's time for you to pay, or when you come in for your training, mm -hmm. you but yeah, I missed last week, or yeah, I only ate two meals on my meal plan, and I went out, I did this and that, whatever the case may be. Yeah. That's um disturbing to my ears. Mm -hmm. So yeah, same with me. So I just tell them, listen, <laughs> you better off probably take another route because unfortunately this is, this isn't for you. Right. Me anyway. Right. Because I, I I never hit them just like that. I always mm -hmm. give them a pack talk beforehand. Oh, yeah. yeah but if they're to. this is a constant pattern. Yeah. I just then I have to hit them a little um, not bold, but because I care, so I, I get to the point with it. Listen. Yeah. This is a service, and I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure you hit your goal, and you don't you're giving me literally the opposite what I'm giving you. And that's not fair to me and others right. who can use this time to have me. So either we won't pick it up or we might have to find another option. So did your health and fitness kind of journey start with bodybuilding or did it start with something else? Did you play sports or something? No. Or? Okay. So um, I started working out at an early age. I like seven. My okay. dad worked out. Um, rest in peace. He worked out. He was doing his thing. And my older brother, he's, he started doing what my dad was doing. Okay. Just, just grabbing weights. Mm -hmm. And my older brother, RJ... He was very controlling. So whatever he did, he, I had to do it too. He made me yeah. do it, <laughs> right? So he started working out in the basement, doing some bench pressing and push-ups. He made me do it. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing it, I, I just loved it instantly. Like the moment I started lifting weights, that was a turn on for me. It was weird. Right. I instantly loved it. Yeah. I, then I started, I begged my mom and dad to get these muscle mags for me to read. And that's the only time I like reading. In school, I wasn't a good reader. But when it came to reading anything to do with fitness, mm -hmm. I, could read a, I could read a whole magazine one day. Yeah. I still got all the magazines that I was currently reading when I was a kid. And I used to write these fake addresses. Because, you know, you used to have them. Um, you, you, can, you can mail in yeah, yeah, uh, a subscription. Yeah, yeah. I used to give a fake them. address. <laughs> that way I go to how to pick it back, pick it up. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I started, I started around seven. I started taking it serious around 11 years old. When I, I legit started writing out my own regiment. I used to follow on uh, during Yates. Man, I'm a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is not for a kid. Right. And which is why I think over the years I had a lot of joint issues because mm -hmm. I did things too early. So... 10 years old, 11 years old, I started working out using the, the weights that my dad had. 
um, going to failure and everything. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just, it said three sets of 10. I'm failing that rep four, mm-hmm. trying to get to 10. So I was actually doing cluster sets, not even knowing what that was yeah. at the time. So I was really using these methods that people use to grow muscle yeah. just to get to my set. Right. So I started then, and then when I, about the time I got, about the time I was like 14, 15, I started training my friends and family members because I look big for my age. Yeah. And at the time, your hormones are over the place. So you buy some grub guards, whatever you do. Mm-hmm. I was eating a lot of food, eat big, get big, eating dumb shit, get fat, really. But right. doing that, train my friends, family. And throughout high school, I played football. Mm-hmm. I, um, I fractured my hip, sophomore year, playing football, stopped playing football, got to bodybuilding. That's so our weight training with a regiment. Uh, I met Fred Smalls at the training center. I said, I want In be high a, school, you met him? Yeah. Oh, okay. I said, I want to be a bodybuilder. So he was like, well, you got to have consent for your parents to sign on. My mom signed the consent that I would do the choice and throw them. And he was my coach for, um, and then senior year came around. I wanted to do my first show. Uh, I was 17 going on 18, so I ended up competing at 18 years old. The best time birthday came around, I had to register as an adult. Yeah. So I couldn't do teens. I had to do open with the big boys. So uh, I started bodybuilding legit around like 16, 17, like legit training like a bodybuilder. Right. That's the understanding of principles of a bodybuilder when I was 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Then I was, um, uh, me and Fred linked up, and then he he honestly started my, he didn't want to open the door for me as a, tra- as a trainer, to be honest with you. Because um, I was already doing it illegally because I was, I, was, I was a kid, so I wasn't certified yet. And I was working, back when I was 18, I was working to get my certific- certification. I remember to this very day, Fred could tell you the same story. He says it at every Christmas party. Um, he was getting ready for his first Arnold Classic. I think it was 2012 or 2013. He was um, working out late at the gym. I was working out too, but doing my own thing. And this guy came up to him and asked him, hey, man, you mind showing me all these exercises? And Fred was getting kind of like just uh, bothered by him. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's like two weeks out. You know yeah. what I mean? He said, Kyle, come real quick. He said, uh, do you want to do a bench press? I said, yeah. He said, you mind showing this guy? I don't know. I got through a whole workout. <laughs> explaining the movements everything yeah. and Fred was so blown by it he said man you're a trainer I said no technically not yet he said get certified I promise you you'll make a lot of money I said he said trust me whatever you do now I promise you make a lot of money you have passion I see in your eyes you might even myself I promise you you'll you, you be great in this industry so really said, I promise you get certified I'll hire you so and, and he ended up hiring me anyway before he was even certified once I got certified then it made things a lot more easier for me to Fully do right, but um, yeah, he's he when I started me, we, we've been training partners since I was uh 18 all the way until uh, a year or two ago, okay. But um, yeah, almost 10 years. So, uh, me and him, we we had we share the same passion. Um, we did fall apart a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, but 2017, but we're actually now getting back together and everything, so it's pretty cool. Was that the era? Because I've noticed that like you're there was like a core group at the training center, like you got like the trainers. And then Fred, you know what I mean? But then all of a sudden, like, there was all new trainers. Yeah, well, again, when it comes to, uh, this is what I, I, I can relate to. When it comes to a business, at the time, I didn't have a business mindset yet at the time. Right. Um, but turn a diamond dozen. Mm-hmm. They come and go. Yeah. Um, the moment they're not having a full book of clients, they want to do something totally different. Yeah. Um, they're not want to put, like... This is my passion. Right. So the kids. So I remember I, when I started, I only had like two or three clients. And I was at the gym for 15, 18 hours a day. My girlfriend at the time was like, Kyle, are you making any fucking money? Like, mm-hmm. coming home, broke his shit. Yeah. So I was like, no, you got to be around. So you, you got to be able to talk to people. You got to yeah. be around. And before you know it, a book grew and grew and grew. Mm-hmm. But a lot of trans leads, that's because um, either they're not making the amount of money they want to make right away. Or did this never had a passion in the first place, which is to come to the next topic about how I feel the industry is fucked up right now. But yeah. people do a show, now they want to be a coach. So the passion was never there in the beginning. So that's a lot of them. So they come and go. He does have a pretty strong team right now. Uh, a lot of them, they're fairly new, but they're definitely willing to learn and get more education. And Fred always preaches great principles when it comes to training and training. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot through him. He, he's my first mentor. Um, but... When I was there, it was more so me and Fred running the show and his cousin Micah, who also was doing the Tristan training too. Right. But I was young and hungry. I remember I was doing probably like 50, 60 sessions a week mm-hmm. of personal training. I wasn't doing nutrition yet at the time. Yeah. But now I would think things are more like double, but I was hungry. And a lot of trainers there, they were training clients, and when they're done, they'll leave right home. Mm-hmm. I stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'll train. I'm going to have three clients in the morning to have. Five hour window before next client. Right. I worked out during that time frame, read during that time frame, took notes, asked questions. For now, it boom, it's time to train my next client. Mm-hmm. And 
that's the thing is about understanding you have to love the atmosphere you're in. If you don't right. love the atmosphere you're oh, in, yeah. you're gonna be you'll find ways to go home or do something else. Yep. So you got to love where you're at. You right. got to fit the image, or create it yourself either mm -hmm. way. And that's why I done another training center. I made a big impact there. I thought a lot of, a positive one. Trained a lot of people there. I changed a lot of lives there. I'm still welcome there. I go there. Treat my family. Jack okay. Osborne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, uh, it's like a pop to me. I, we'll go in there. It's love. They're Fred. We're cool. So I think it's working out really well. Um, moving forward now, especially in the loss of our brother Eric Madison, he's a, he's a big part of our training group, mm -hmm. and it made it brought us together. I thought. Yeah, yeah. So moving forward, I learned not to hold grudges, um, be uh, ignorant, mm -hmm. and just be open minded. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I broke the ice with Fred, and now we're. We're pretty much getting back to normal. So yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I was there for a very short time, um, because I I started bodybuilding with Sue, Sue Davis. Sue Davis yeah. So I was with her, and then she was like, um, she was like, I think you have potential, and I think Fred can get you there. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, if you say so. Like she right, told right, me right. to go I to, get him, to get you know to. what I mean? And um, so I started with him and stuff like that. But then like my life just. You know, um, I ended up getting engaged, and we got a house, and then Remember that. all this stuff has started happening, and my drive for bodybuilding just wasn't there. Because before, it was like I'm sure it was like with same thing with you. It was eat, sleep, bodybuilding. You know what I mean? Everything I was watching on TV, bodybuilding. You know what I mean? Video after video, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, yeah. like just getting. I don't know. That's all it was, and I think like year, years of doing that, I just uh, burnt myself out. All right. You know what I mean? And um, I love competing. I love the stuff I had to go through. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, I get it. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thrill. Yeah. And then, but, you know, I just lost that fire for the actual competing part. Sure. And then for a little while, even the training. <laughs> I get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I get it. For, it trust was just me. like. People don't understand, man. When yeah. you. Because when you're all in and you're going hard, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, do I want to do that anymore? That's and that's and that brings my other point. When it comes to legit training, mm -hmm. training, people work out. You're training hard. When you're training, yeah. you're training. It's different than working. It's different. Out. I don't know if what nobody says. People say they're lying. You don't truly enjoy it. Right. I mean, you love it, but you don't enjoy it to the point where you're like, it's like you're fucking sore. Mm -hmm. You're tired. Mm -hmm. Next day's leg day, and you know you gotta do a triple drop set, yeah. rest pause, super set, cluster set. Yeah. You know damn well, and you're training to true yeah. failure. Uh. That shit is, it'll drain you. Yeah. So doing that day in, day out, week by week, month by month, year by year, you get to a point where, you know what, man, I need a break. Yeah. Many people are like, oh, what are you talking about? You work out. Mm -hmm. You don't train, you work out. Yeah. You, just, you go to the gym, you go to failure a couple of things, you do movies that you you like. Right. You're not putting a bar on your back, squat five, six hundred pounds. You ain't right. doing none of that. Yeah. You may be doing leg extensions and leg presses and call it a day, text me your phone. Yeah. And say you worked out. Yeah. So people like um like Carlos. Carlos for like we train tomorrow leg day. He has an off day today, do um he hit, get his meals in, and then we train stupid on Saturday for legs, and then another rest day, and then back to his training split. He set his days up knowing, okay, it's like that. I'm not going to do shit today yeah. or the day before. He needs need, need that constant quality of recovery. Mm -hmm. Because when you're training at that level, it is so brutal that you don't want to do shit the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember I was just training leg or back. And my friend, you caught me trying to go out tonight. I'm like, what? I'm trying to go fucking sleep. Yeah, there's no way. I'm trying to eat and sleep. No you're way. trying to go out. Yeah. You're in train, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so... But um, oh what, and also my personal experience when I was bodybuilding, because I was young at the time doing it, uh, it definitely hindered my relationship as, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Because I was so tunnel vision mm -hmm. of eating my meals at a container day in day out. Didn't want to go to um, I got to eat with through off dating and stuff like mm -hmm. going on dates. Yeah. Um, everything I watched had to do with bodybuilding, um, reading books on bodybuilding, nutrition, and training, and and my girlfriend at the time she supported it, but I wasn't in, wasn't into it. Yeah. And it kind of. Uh, made things harder on the relationship because mm -hmm. I was just taking advice from those who were single yeah. with bodybuilding. Tell me, no, man, you should, you should I rock out or not? Like, you got this is this is your goal, this is your dream, blah, blah, blah. And it was, but you like now I have friends who are married and still bodybuilders, some are professional bodybuilders. This yeah. is kind of, you, you prioritize everything. Mm -hmm. You have to set it up where you know, tell your girl, in two weeks from now, we go out here to eat. Yeah. You can plan your cheat meal or your re I'll call it refeeds. Yep. Um, or whatever case may be. Right. I was I was too young and um, ignorant 
Yeah. I didn't listen, care to hear none of that. Mm -hmm. And that affected my relationships. I would say, um, good and bad was good and bad. Yeah. Bad part was I uh, took some negative advice and I used it. Mm -hmm. The good stuff was I learned how to truly train, how to push myself, how to be disciplined, consistent, yeah. how to understand how important sleep was, how important protein was, get your meals in. Mm -hmm. Um, your deep tissue um, some massages and yeah. all that stuff to really perform at your best and grow at a maximum level. Definitely learned a lot. It came yeah. to um, you know, supplementation protocols, food, all that good stuff. I learned a lot that I probably would never learn if I never tried bodybuilding. Exactly. So when those who uh, try to knock bodybuilding, it's because, it's because they couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. They couldn't handle it because bodybuilding is 24-7. I don't care nobody says. It's not like um, I play other sports, so it's not like football where you have a season. Right. Then after that, you just go ahead and you no. Know, you get a couple months off. You can take vacation. Man, body so. doing it all season, just yeah. as important as contest season. Yeah. Because all season, we got to make all your uh, your own new growth gains. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you development. Change, yeah. So you know what I mean. So body doing it is a lifestyle, twenty four seven. There's no breaks involved. I don't care nobody right. says. Even your rest day is a, is a part of work. Right. You need a rest so you can make sure you train hard the next day. That's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, with that being said, I definitely love my experience of bodybuilding and support anybody who's willing to do it. You know, I'm getting back into it for next year. Mm -hmm. I'm just adjusting my lifestyle a little bit because uh, me being a business owner now, dealing with a lot of clientele, I really have to change my movement. Right. I don't have a whole lot of free time just to work out whenever I want. Mm -hmm. I really have to schedule it. Yeah. Like, I need the 90 minutes to myself. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure the 90 minutes count. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. But, um, but yeah, man. Are you planning on doing NPC? Yes, or, I plan, okay. I plan on doing NPC, um, just because that's all I know. Yeah, yeah. And um, I might do classic, might do it. Um, not saying I'm a big fan of classic. No offense yeah. to to do it. Right. I just um, I mean, I want to, I want a bodybuilder course, but I'm battling some limitations, some some joint issues from the past. Yeah. That's still lingering to this day. That I'm trying to fix. Uh, but I believe I get my size back, and with no, now I'm more knowledgeable than more than I was then. Mm -hmm. So I know how to handle myself a little more better when it comes to nutrition, protocols, and training and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but if if classic fits my structure and the weight that I look good at, that might do it. Right. Um, I, I'm not knocking it classic. I just feel like the industry has opened up more doors for people to be, get involved in because it makes more money. It makes more sense for the industry. Yeah, and I mean, it's also, um, it's weird because now, like, especially in the NPC, you probably don't see it too much. You won't see it in the pro ranks, but in the NPC, you can have, I've seen a guy do all three. He would compete in um, physique, that. classic, and then that. bodybuilding. I'm like, how, you, that's not supposed to happen. I, I, I see it. I, I remember I was at, uh, uh, damn, what show was that? I think the Big Cat last year had a client compete. You got second in men's physique. And a guy did men's physique and did classic. Yeah, the guy won both 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 categories. I know. I was it's like, like "How's that supposed to happen?" How, how do you right? Like, and and one that was saying, not knocking no promoters, but they never tell you what they want. Oh yeah, you don't know if they're going for size or conditioning. Right. You never know. You got to go in. Hopefully, they like your luck. Yeah. So I never heard a promoter say, "We're looking for balance, symmetry, conditioning," mm -hmm. and now I'm really concerned about being a monster. Yeah. It's about <laughs> whoever looks good that day that peels their eyes at that moment. Yeah. So that's why I always um, tell my clients to prepare to bring your best ever. Signs, foreign conditioning, balance, symmetry, everything to be portioned. Mm -hmm. So we prep for that for a whole year for that. And then we do about 18-week prep. Some of my clients are gifted in metabolism. They only do like an eight-week prep. Wow. But majority of my clients, they do about 16, 18-week prep. Okay. And I, the way I go about my, my method, a little different than others, I don't. I like, hit, I like killing you early so I can bring you in so I know I can – feed you into the show so you're saving some good tissue exactly and you know what's funny is um so i only the only person i train she's an mma fighter awesome. and she's, a, she's a close friend of ours so right now she's four no um she did a couple fights on keto that wasn't my choice that was hers and um i told her i was like it, it works right now but as um time goes on you're gonna start um feeling a little bit weaker you're not gonna be able to perform as well and that's exactly what started happening. So, um, so then we started like switching things up again. And then, um, but I go with the mindset of like a bodybuilding show, um, especially with cutting weight. You know, I'm not trying to cut weight at the last minute like a lot of these uh, fighters are. Because the fighters, I'm like, why are they still doing it this way? 
All we right. have so much more knowledge in nutrition and science and stuff. They're still cutting weight at the last minute. There was a girl, and she was um, it was a UFC fight, and she was weighing in, shaking. You know what I mean? I've seen it. I've seen and it I was just time. like, I was like, why is that still happening? You know. So, the way I approach her is, um, I try to have her at the weight or close to the weight, like a week before. Because that's what you want to do for a bodybuilder. Right. So that's the way we go about it. Right. You know, and I was like, I don't see anything bad about that. No, I agree. And that's why, I, mean, I know a lot of coaches, um, some like my protocol, some don't. I mean, I took pieces from a lot of coaches and designed my own. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes somebody a good coach. Take what you like from other coaches who are high level coaches and find what you like, what you don't like, and make your own. And I just like bringing somebody in early yeah. so I can feed them. And think about it. if I if I if you're four weeks sound, you look on the show ready, I can feed you. Your metabolism is exactly where we need to be. I can feed you. Yeah. You're gonna save tissue. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna come in and lose muscle at the same time. Look all stringy. Mm -hmm. Not trying to fill you out. Now your hormones are all deprived. And now your cortisol is elevated, crazy, and yeah. you're looking like shit. Mm -hmm. Or you do look good, but mentally you're so fucking dead. Yeah. You didn't even enjoy it now. So I normally have my I, we have a growing phase, and then I started to. Do my um, low carb diets, kill them with that training. Cardio, I obviously I play with, but majority is the training nutrition that I really hit them on hard. Mm -hmm. That way, once we're like eight weeks out, I can already see where your body is going. Right. We checking in so consistently. I don't know when, you know your health markers are at and everything. Where things is is perfect. We need to be mm -hmm. for the most part, and it works for me. Uh, like again, I, um, I've done the shows where I um, we had a do drastic things last for three, three, two weeks. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. Right. I felt it very fucked up my, um, my sleep. Um, constantly going to the store getting different foods now. You yeah. know what I mean? It does like shit like that. It's like expensive. Yeah. Now I'm doing nothing but salmon and asparagus, fat looting with it. You know, it's just like, shit, like what the hell is going on? Yeah. So I prefer to, you the know, all season I'm playing with foods that I know your body can handle. Yeah. So I know I can, cause the protein really don't change. Mm -hmm. So I know if you can handle fish or whatever, if you can handle um, different fat sources like avocado oil, avocados, macadamia, and stuff like that. I know, I know you can handle those fat sources. I know right. you can play with too. But and carbs, obviously, no, we're gonna go to high because in depth carbs, kind of carb loot and stuff like that. But majority of majority of the time, I kind of already puzzle how your body, how I need you, how how I need your body to react when when the time comes. Because mm -hmm. I the master it early. So I know what foods don't fucking use. It right. bloats you. They yeah. get constipated. Mm -hmm. so I never had a client constipated, but like, and that's common. People get constipated like a week out. Oh yeah. I never had issues with none of my clients because I mastered the gut health. Yeah. Make sure that you're not, but keep sauerkraut in the food. Make sure we take a nice probiotic. That way, your, your um, your um, blood flora is healthy. Your body yeah. has good um, gut bacteria to help sustain you know, what comes to waste and all that stuff. That way, your body doesn't look bloated and watery and now your body's so stressed out, and now you're stressing because now you don't look the way you want to look. And here right. you are trying to do more cardio or cut out the carbs. I'm trying to feed you the carb you want. You're doing the opposite because you're stressing. You don't want to tell me about it. Yeah, I end up all that shit early. Yeah, I don't really have issues. I mean, they do come here and there, but so far I never had an issue with that because I'm big on since I had IBS, mm -hmm. I. I I study on that side. So now I know that good health is probably the most important part of the prep. Oh, yeah, definitely. Once I get to somebody where it needs to be, I knew you can handle the food that I'm going to feed you. Yeah. Like, I have people eating seven, eight meals a day, and they literally feel good. Like, how do you feed somebody that many meals a day? Well, he's not eating 100 grams of protein per meal. Yeah. No, he's at about 35, 40 a meal, but he's doing seven, eight meals. Right. And he can handle it. Some people have four to five meals, but if, you, if I know your stomach can handle it and you up that long of a day, yeah. I need to feed your protein every two, every three hours. Right. I need to make sure your body is constantly not in a cannabis state. You're not going to, because I make sure my whoever I train, I push. I make sure they're training hard, intense. So you need to make sure your protein level is elevated. That's why um, clients who do keto, um, they try to use the the, um, the the medical design keto when mm -hmm. it comes to high, super high fats, like ten, like five, ten percent protein, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You can't use that protocol when you're trying to build muscle. Right. And for one, it's not also to build muscle on keto anyway, mm -hmm. but that's your type of, that's how you like to eat. Protein has to be high. They say, well, you won't be in ketosis if you have too much protein, because protein breaks down amino acids acid into glucogenesis, blah, blah, blah. Yes, to a degree. But if you're training intense, you break down all that tissue, mm -hmm. 
your body's going to utilize that amount of protein that you're putting in. Mm-hmm. Your body's going to use it to repair and build right. the building blocks, right? Mm-hmm. So that's my argument. People say, you have people eating too much protein on keto? No, I don't. Because when you train that intense, you need adequate protein. You right. can't follow the damn 10%. Because there's no way you're going to recover. Yeah, you, you know there's I mean? no yeah. way. Because you're not doing two sets per exercise and only going on a failure on half of them. Right. Like, no, you're going to phone every fucking true set. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, again, I'm not big on keto, but yeah. I, I master keto. I know the points of keto. I know yeah. how to use keto for clients who enjoy it, who can be inherent to it. I know how to put a clown keto in the prep. Right. Just because I know how important carbs is for your central nervous system, glycogen stores, and all that good stuff. But low carb days is kind of like a keto approach, mm-hmm. but I never had a client under uh, 40 grams a day. Mm-hmm. I never had to do it. Yeah. I knew client, I knew I knew I knew uh, coaches who do that, yeah. and it works for them. Mm-hmm. But I don't like. Um, I love my love my clients to have healthy tissue. The muscle look full. Muscle look good and healthy. Right. Yeah, you, you, there's gonna be times you gotta flatten them out, but they look healthy. Mm-hmm. They don't look like they're fucking like about to die. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, oh, you got you plate really hard. You put for like shit. To a certain degree, mm-hmm. but a lot of them use the excuse. Well, I have them on low carb for three, four weeks, and that's why he lost a lot of muscle. That's why his legs are narrow. That's why his shoulders shrinking down, his chest is f- look all str- all flat and strong. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You want to lose fat, not muscle. Right. So that's my approach. Exactly. You know what I mean? So what are your thoughts about these like different diets and stuff like that coming out? You know, you got people using vegan as less of less of a um. Uh, like an animal rights thing, you know what I mean? Less for the animals and more for the weight loss. Or you got keto and you got intermittent fasting and you got all these different things and you got people and you got carnivore now. Like it's getting big. Um, what are your thoughts on those? All right. So my thoughts, they all, honestly, they all work great as long as your protein is matching the, um, your lean body mass. Mm-hmm. And long, if you go and lose fat, you may be in the caloric deficit. Mm-hmm. I don't care what diet you're on. No diet is superior to the next diet. Right. So if you're not a core deficit, you're not going to lose fat. Mm-hmm. I don't care what nobody says. Studies proved it year after year. Right. That's why me and Jen Craig can go back and forth with uh, uh, data as I can learn understand how to read these graphs of how when you have a control study, they put people into fasting, mm-hmm. keto. I think it was like three or four different methods mm-hmm. in a 12-week frame in a deficit. They all lost about the same amount of weight. Put them in a surplus. It's hard to actually be in a surplus on keto because the fat and protein itself curves hunger and appetite. Mm-hmm. So the satiety is, is different. But overall, when it comes to maximum fat loss, the overall chart shows about the same. So this study shows that as long as you adhere to one of those plans and that's something that fits you, awesome. Um, but for somebody to say, you shouldn't have meat, it's not good for you, and blah, 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 just shut the fuck up. No. And, their, and their whole argument, too, is the inflammation. I was like, well, they actually did studies where one person ate all vegetables and one person ate all meat, and the amount of inflammation was pretty much the same. Right. And, and I was like, see, that's the craziest thing. There's no – it's all about – so you. I think you should be a vegan because you don't want to eat animals. That's right. why you should be vegan, not to lose yes. weight. Yes, yes. And, that, and that's the, I have so many people come in for consults about, hey, how do you feel about the vegetarian diet? I'm doing it. I'm seeing a lot of results. You probably see results because you're watching how you're eating. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I do have a good amount of clients who are vegan, mm-hmm. but vegetarian, and they uh, enjoy it. They, that's what they like. Yeah. And if now, they like I'm, it, that's great. I'm all about it. Yeah. Uh, again, I tell them, as long as we can make, put you the master goal. Because mm-hmm. remember, this is my method I use for most of my clients. I, uh, I set the calories, then the protein. I let the fat and carbs fall wherever it needs to fall based on your. Um, what you enjoy the most as far as either fast for fuel or carbs for fuel. But when it comes to training, if they're t- truly training, I'm, I'm going to go with protein, carbs, and fats. Yeah. Carbs is very essential when it comes to training. Mm-hmm. It's not an essential nutrient, but it is essential when it comes to building um, muscle because you need collection stores to sustain that level of intensity of training, also with protein synthesis, etc. So I would argue that, in my opinion, when it comes to body composition, carbs is essential. Even mm-hmm. though it's not an essential nutrient, but when it comes to body, body composition, it, to me, it's essential because it right. plays a big part of recovery. But as um, far as these different methods of diets, if you can follow it, <laughs> I'm all about it. Yeah. Again, if your protein is not matching the goal, you're not going to see shit Right. besides looking like shit. Mm-hmm. So 
I do have people do carnivore. I do have clients to do that. Okay. But they understand the importance of what I explained. Your protein has to match. Make sure, we also have to make sure we get your macronutrients in as well. So you're not mm-hmm. deficient. And that's, that's meant to all my clients. It's not just one diet better than the next diet. None of that shit is true. Mm-hmm. Caloric deficit to maximize body fat. Proper surplus, about 10% above your maintenance intake right. to build lean tissue without carrying too much body fat. Mm-hmm. And you adjust it over time. When it comes to, well, my, my one friend, she lost 50 pounds. She did Herbalife or she did um, Shake Master or she did use waist trainers and shit like that. And none against none of those. None against none of, I, none against none of those. Oh, but, I have everything against it. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. Well, it's just that my thing is. Like for example, like um, like waist trainers, mm-hmm. they do not make you burn fat. They right. don't. And I, I done plenty of debunks on this already on my Facebook page. My theory of you wearing that, you see the difference. This is my theory on that. When you when you're restricting yourself, mm-hmm. remember they say it benefits to work up to five to eight hours a day. Right. When you wear it to mm-hmm. see results. Right. Because you're restricting, you're remember, squeezing yourself. When yeah. you're wearing it, you still obviously you eating right. Mm-hmm. So you so. You feel so discomfort that when you're eating, you don't eat all your food. Over time, that's a deficit. You actually mm-hmm. eating less food, mm-hmm. so weight is going to drop. Mm-hmm. So you you feel like you're losing more weight, which you are, but it's indirectly from that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's why I tell people: listen, if you were a waist trainer and you were about your posture or something like that, I get it. But mm-hmm. food's fat. Knock that shit off. I mean, Sweet sweats, knock it off. It's the same thing. It's the same reason that Ronnie Coleman wore his belt all the time, you know, and why bodybuilders wear their weight belts a lot because they believe that it does something to your waist where it makes it like kind of shrink a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, even though it's used for like back support and stuff like that. Right. 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 Um, but yeah, so you mentioned like Herbalife and all that stuff. Uh, what are your kind of your thoughts on that? Because now i've seen a couple of them it's not herbalife it's like uh octavia i see one last ot ice like that. Some ice crazy shit. but now you got these um you got these places so i think like octavia or something and uh they're pyramid schemes right right you get you get you so you sell it to someone and you become like their coach but you're not coaching them through it you're just like giving them positivity you know what i'm saying but you're right. calling yourself a coach Right. I was like, I put night long nights and early mornings and stuff into meal plans and workout plans and sending it to people. And all you're doing is saying, good job, keep it going. Right. Like, don't call yourself a coach. Right. You know I, I mean? Again, I, to- I totally get it. Uh, I'm with you 100% on that. The one that I would say, trust me, I was battling Herbalife for, for like 10 years. Yeah. I was battling with them. We yeah. had wars. Believe me. I'm sure. Believe me. I'm sure. Um. Well, I came across one of my clients. Uh, she's an amazing, amazing woman individual, Allison. She runs her own uh, Herbalife store. Okay. And um, she understands the points of protein and food. She knows doing too much liquids can actually weaken your gut. Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how people can get prone to leaky gut syndrome. But um, she understands that she puts her clients on obviously using Herbalife, but she also makes her eat uh, meals, salad meals too. Right. For See, gut. I agree with that. Like, so, yeah. but I. I had to adjust her her understanding of it because I was like, listen, the reason why her leg works so fast because they put you in the extreme deficit. You're like 400 calories. Yeah. So quit putting lose weight quick, but they can't sustain it. Right. Because nobody's going to be like, hey, babe, you, you want to go to dinner? Hold up, I got to grab my shake. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's not how that works. So you got to teach food. You got to teach people how to eat. And she understood that, what I meant by that. And so she started pitching to her clients, mm-hmm. and her movement is super strong. She's yeah. killing it because she understands her, and she makes sure her life has a part. But mm-hmm. she also understands that food is very important too. Don't right. knock food; you need to eat too. Right. And she's trying to compete, so she understands all that. Yeah. But for a lot of them, they don't understand. Mm-hmm. They're they're not coaches. Yeah. They just tell people, "Amazing job, keep it up. Send me updates next week." So, of course, the first 14 days, you might drop weight. Yeah. They'll take a quick picture of them, save it, show the next person that, repeat that. For yeah. now, they have a chart of all the portfolio of pictures of people. Yeah. But I don't see them six months later. I don't see them again. Yeah. They and I've seen, I've seen people, like, lose, like, 40 pounds, 60 pounds on that kind of stuff. Right. But then, um, once it's all done with, because that's their whole, like, cycle, once they're done and they don't know how to eat, they don't know where to go from there because yeah. they were just drinking shakes the whole time. 
You know what I mean? So the girl that you're talking about, man, she's doing the perfect thing. Yeah. It's like using it as like a supplement rather than um, just doing it itself. Right. Like you get with Shakeology or Herbalife or all these other things that are out there. You know, right. and being in fitness, uh, I've had people come to me multiple times and try and sell me these things. Me too. And be like, oh, you can make you can make uh, six figures doing this. I'm like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> and I'm not going to try and sell someone something that I don't believe in. Right. You know what I mean? It's like with my supplements, I make sure that I try them first before I you, like sell them. Because I want to like sure. it. I want to like the taste. I want to like the way it works. You know? Um, so that's right. Right now, I only carry a few because I'm still in the process of trying yeah, different try, things. Yeah, I get it. Awesome. You know what I mean? Awesome. But that's just how I feel about it. No, I get it, man. And that's the thing is, I try to tell people, I don't care what method you use when it comes to uh, fitness, as long as you're consistent. And only doing shakes, how consistent can you be long term? Exactly. You know what I mean, when it yeah. comes to doing carnivore, how consistent can you be long term? If that's right. not truly how you like to eat, mm-hmm. even with, with, with um like um, vegetarian diets or carb dominant, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So I try to tell them, yes, when you're having beans, utensils, and all that, they're also high in carbs. Yeah. So, and for me to get your protein to match the need. Your carbs are so elevated, so I have to yeah. you know supplement here and there. And even with things. them too, it's easy to eat that processed stuff because there's nothing in it. Right. You can have chips and you right. know eat chips on the regular, right? Because you know you're like, what else do I eat? Like when you go somewhere, you know what I mean? No, it's, it's rough. But, so, but I managed to um, f- uh, find a pretty good protocol I use for them, and seen about really well. Yeah. Um, because I, I had to understand that I can't tell people how I eat based off my opinion on mm-hmm. that. I had to go based off of structuring nutrition well around. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and I've seen plenty of results from all angles. Right. Because I, but I always tell them first, inherence matters the most. Mm-hmm. How consistent can you be in day in, day out, and not get tired of this shit? Yeah. And then I'll make adjustments every week on the meal plan, make sure I change the protein sources and the amount of eating, stuff like that. Yeah. But they, they all know your protein has to match. Because most people come to me with a diet. I, 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 um, I ask a few questions. They'll tell me yesterday, from morning to nighttime, what'd you eat? I write it down, I'll plug it into my software, they would probably eat a thousand calories. Yeah. And forty grams of protein. Yeah. <laughs> they wonder why they're not seeing the results. Their carbs are like at like eleven hundred yeah. grams. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I try to tell people you need to understand what your portion size is, what you're eating, you know, make sure you get in your your macro and micronutrients in there. So mm-hmm. the, the the profiles of of, of both are equally uh, important. So yeah. you're not like me, I'm uh, anemic, so I make sure my iron levels are elevated. I know yeah, okay. my body definitely gets cold if I'm weak and sore and tight. If I don't make sure my iron levels, that's why I do red meat twice a day. And I take my blood builder uh, su- su- supplement that yeah. helps me. But I do red meat twice a day. Probably, what, you're doing too much red meat. It's not opening up cancer cells. No, it doesn't. Stop. Yeah. I don't care. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you heard of the vertical diet. Yeah. But, um, um, Dang, what's his name? Uh, Stan, Stan uh, Afton. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I did an online course through him last okay. year, and I learned a lot about micronutrients. Yeah. Sodium, that's very important, especially when it comes to training, mm-hmm. hydration, recovery, B12, basically getting a lot through eggs. So I learned a lot through him, and I learned that, you know, I didn't really think about micronutrients being that important. He said, no. That's yeah. going to determine how well your body can handle macronutrients. Yeah. I was low shit. Yeah. So I learned a lot through him. And, and it helps a lot in bodybuilding, too, to, to depend. Like, you think you have to be, like, higher on fats, lower on carbs, whereas you actually just need to be lower on sodium. <laughs> right. You know, just little things like that. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's amazing how you can manipulate certain things to make mm-hmm. sure the body is falling into place. Yeah, man. I mean, it's crazy. Um, what are some things that you don't like about, like, bodybuilding? Things, some things I don't like, the like the w- posing and stuff. Do you like? Okay, that well, I'll, I'll start with it. As far as the, um, as far as business wise, um, the biggest issue I see today is people do a show, mm-hmm. and now they're a coach. Yeah, it's everywhere. I yeah. see it every day. Yeah, and people hire them because they look good. Never realizing, no, they're on gear. Mm-hmm. They don't know steroids, and course that's part of the game right because you, you can't you can't hit that level of density and conditioning right at that level with that amount of size mm-hmm. that's you it's a very small fracture that you can do without it yeah i got two clients who compete at a high level and don't they don't use drugs okay now those who do use enhancements yeah so i don't want nobody to get twisted but 
But for the most people, you got to use enhancements. Mm -hmm. No way around it. No way you can be in that strong of a deficit without losing uh, muscle in the process. Right. So obviously T3 is involved, clenbuterol, trambolone, all that stuff, yeah. right? To hold collagen fullness and all that stuff. But however, I think business-wise, it fucked a lot of people up because yeah. people do, they'll do a show. The coach got them in shape. And now they're marketing, hey, I'm a coach. Uh, it's the one Delaware Classic. And people are because, oh, wow, he looks good. He don't know anything about gut health, nutrition, adherence, food behavior, food cues, macronutrient, et cetera. He don't know none about it. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you he eat chicken. He just knows how to work out. He'll tell you eat chicken and fish and yeah. do your rice, and you have a cheat meal once a week. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because that's what yeah. he's going to him to do. Exactly. So, and I've seen the dough dime a dozen. They fall off. But um, as far as posing, as far as the bodybuilding goes itself, um, I, I, I like the posing. I do like the posing. I just don't like how... They charge an arm and a leg just to compete. Yeah, um, yeah that's NPC a, cards like 120 bucks. You got to hoop. You got it. You, you better hoop. You got it. At the beginning of the year. If right. You get it end of the year. You got to renew it again anyway. Renew it again, and, and then, then you may compete once a year. Yeah, like, that's what just, I did anyway. Yeah, so I, that's what I, I did too. I, yeah. I, I renewed it every fucking <laughs> year. So the classes are expensive, anywhere between 75 to 100 dollars per class. Mm -hmm. And you could maybe want you to do open, novice, and then say. Um, um, for example, say you're like 35. Yeah. So you're doing open, novice, and then you're doing 35 and over. Looking at three, four hundred bucks just, just for the classes. Yeah. Then the NPC card, the spray tan and hotel fee, and you might got a trophy. Yeah. If you want, you got a trophy. Does does natural cost that much? Does doing like a natural um, show? No, too sure, but I'm pretty sure. Um, they do, but they, they, they follow the same format of uh, it, do it, it costs to do per class. Yeah, yeah. So they do uh, do that. Um, Far to being more expensive, I'm not too sure about that. Um, it's tough because I actually uh, love those who can, can do it all naturally. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's, it's impressive. Yeah. Just that OCB doesn't get looked at at all. Right. There's no money in that. Right. So I mean, for example, um, don't want to expose his name. The good guy. He won uh, the, the the natural the natural cup. That's mm -hmm. like the Olympia, and he did um, NPC. He got smoked in yeah. the nationals. He got almost dead last. Yeah. So that shows a big spectrum of difference. Oh yeah, of, it's yeah. So it's nice that you can do that. So it's impressive. Mm -hmm. But if you try and do it because you want to be a professional bodybuilder, you want to have endorsements, you want to you know, provide for your family, have a good income off of bodybuilding, mm -hmm. and be a good one, you have to you have to do what it takes. Yeah. Supplementation, the food, the training, reaching out to sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Um, I have my own opinion when it comes to that. Most people think. They, they can get sponsored just because they look good. Right. That's not idea how it works. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to sell. Yeah. You got to be able to know how to make them money. Right. That's why I thought I was able to do pretty good when I was young coming up because I knew how to sell. Because mm -hmm. I knew how to promote products. I knew what worked. I, I knew how to announce on how to use the products that I was using. Right. And versus, now you got the social media and stuff yeah, like that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? So versus, hey, I take this and I get jacked. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's, really, it's really not even about the products anymore because now you see, like, I saw, like, certain bodybuilders, like, endorsing one brand one year and now they're on another team i'm like yep. man you just like everything don't you yep. you're just like <laughs> yeah you're just like yep. endorsing everything you know what i mean and no and that's the thing is um again when it comes to sponsorships i believe you should always start off as an ambassador to show right. your worth mm -hmm. so for example my opinion you know if you're good um you, you go for the team if you can sell five thousand a month yeah. if you sell five thousand worth a month they'll no problem cut you check with five hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. So, once you get past the probation phase of, what's that thing? It's like 90 days, whatever it is. Yeah. If you can master hitting a cell consistently like that and progressing, go through the talk meeting, explain the, the, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to prove them, what you're trying to help them build, what you will want them to help them do, uh, you do for them. Mm -hmm. You're showing that you're constantly involved. It makes them comfortable to put you on contract. Right. Um, that's why... Um, when it comes to bodybuilding, they think I oh, look good, so why why they can't pay me? What the hell? For example, you you're a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I own uh, 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 Tyrus Nutrition. Mm -hmm. And you like Kyle? I'm, I'm gonna go to Nationals. I'm okay. Here, here's 30 products sells today. You can't move you can't it. Why the hell am I pay you? Right. Why why take why why lose money? Exactly. <laughs> you can't make me money. And that's what people think is like, okay, what can this company do for me? Whereas you got to think the opposite. <laughs> yes. Like, what can I do for this company? Yes. You know what I mean? Because that's when you want to, like, you want, um, you make them want to pay you. Right. Because you're doing things for them. Right. But, like, kids nowadays, they don't think that way. 
Yeah, they don't, yeah. and because they, they're greedy, they they're yeah. ignorant. Mm-hmm. Um, like I remember uh, Carlos. I remember we was um he was getting he was getting ready for nationals last year. I think we that last year, and he was about to have a concert at MHP. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people tell him, "Don't do it, don't do it." I was, don't fuck, you should do it. But I kind of um, told him my opinion kind of too late because mm-hmm. that's when he already told me he already made a decision. Yeah. And he did not competing. So he could have had a contract for two years and would make some good money when mm-hmm. I'm competing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So just from you had to go with your gut and not try to tell and cause he he's a good image. Yeah. He look he, he has a good skin, he looks good, he's young. I've heard a lot about them though. So it might be a good thing that you didn't Right, true, true. So. True. So my thing was when it comes to be, being sponsored, you gotta be active in social media. Mm-hmm. You gotta be able to um Go to these shows with the with the with the booth, help right. promote the products, you know, to, to clothing, whatever it whatever it takes. Yeah. And make sure the following is with your movement. Yeah. Um, versus hey, well, I'm gonna do national or I'm a pro, I take this and you get results and you have no following base, you can't make sales. That's what made Fred Small so good as um as an athlete to be sponsored to fund be sponsored, because he could always he always made companies a lot of money. Right. And I was I've seen him in my own eyes. Mm-hmm. And he, he was with uh, Premier Sports. He was with um, yeah. I got I, I started using his uh, yeah Premier like um just because he was using it. Right. I was like, oh, Fred uses that. I want to use it too. And he was so yeah. good with it because he because whatever company he was with, he only promoted what he liked in their products. If you yeah. notice that, mm-hmm. but come to certain things, he won't even talk about it. Right. Certain things that he actually liked, he, mm-hmm. and he was confident in it. He used it. He would push it hard. Right. So I seen him make companies twenty, thirty thousand a month. I saw my own eyes. So that's why those want to pay him with those paying them. Mm-hmm. Because he knew how to sell. And he I remember he was with uh, Pollen. And he wasn't even doing well in competitions right. too. So it was he, um yeah. it was like a year or two, I think two years ago. He wasn't even competing because he was battling some health issues. Yeah. And he was one of the top seller mm-hmm. as an athlete. And yeah, and those people who were competing five to eight shows that year. He right. did one show, he was the top seller. He knew business. Yeah, that's why uh, I try to tell people you gotta know what you're talking about, how to go about the movement for it to make sense, right. not just oh look good, so where my money at? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. It's more so how can I make them a lot of money? So much money, like holy fuck! What can we do to keep this guy? Right. What can we do to make him happy? Yeah. Maybe we should fly him out of here and not uh, have him do some promotions here and pay him here. You know what I mean? To take care of you. If you can make a company money, they're gonna take care of you. Yeah. And that's why I try to preach to my clients who are competitors who want to get a sponsor. I say first, be an ambassador, show your worth, be good at it, make them money, truly understand their product and what it does and how to explain it. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna be the fucking doctor with it. Just explain it in a good thirty sec- thirty second clip, yeah. minute clip. Explain right. the product, how to use it, why would you use it, when to put it in, and that's it. And constantly market it and show your worth, mm-hmm. grow your base. Not people always want to want 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 want. Yeah, it's not the case, especially when yeah, I think about these companies. You know, yeah, company. It's hard to to keep the company alive alone. Yeah, and here are people fucking answer to be sponsored mm-hmm. and want money from you. Motherfucker, I ain't wealthy. I know. <laughs> Trying to grow this bitch. <laughs> you gotta want money from me. Like, exactly. I'm mad at you for saying that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's where the, the perspective has to make sense and where a lot of people fall off a short with because they think, well, I look good. That should be enough to, for them to know my worth. It's not yeah. the case. I don't care how good you look. If you can't make me money, why would I pay you money? Right. So we'll wrap it up with this question. I always like to end it with what drives you what motivates you to keep going what motivates me to keep going is honestly my passion um i hate to end it with a dark story but 2017 i was homeless for a bit i lost i lost my all my hope and drive for personal training got to a bad breakup um and my pride was too high to tell my parents about it and i lived in my car for a while mm. but i'm almost going on about four months and i knew i wanted to do my own business I was like, yeah, I just want to do things my way, my way. That way I know I can make money because it's the way I want to do it. And going from going from being broke as shit to making six figures changed my life. Changed my life completely. I'll mm-hmm. never look back. Because now I'm doing what I truly love to do, 110%. Love it every day. Don't get tired of it. And I'm hungry to be the best I want to do. I want people to go, Kyle knows his shit. I want them to be across the globe. 
So with that mindset of me feeling that way, it keeps me hungry to keep going forward. Mm, that's deep, man. Thanks, bro. I love that, though. Thanks, man. It's, I mean, it does. I hate to end it like that, but... Rags the riches, though. That's a story, though. Yeah, man. I battle some crazy shit, so... Um, no, it's, the, my business changed my life, put it that way. I was very fucked up. Yeah. Depressed. No. Uh, Trying to commit suicide, 2017. Yeah. And of course, I shot my mom, my family. Yeah. Um, it was wild, man. I was broke as fuck. Talking about going to the gas station, trying to find a chain on the ground, go get yeah. gas, put two bucks in my car, just to get to the gym. Train clients knowing that, like, so, <laughs> that's a long story, man, but just like putting on this smile, right. this energy that you're feeding off of, now realizing behind the scene, I'm wondering, hmm, if I go to a dollar store, they do have a pack of tuna for two for one. Yeah. That's about 40 grams of protein. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm going from that being being in that environment of uh, feeling stuck mm -hmm. to saying, you know what? Fuck it. Let me go ahead and just grind and do my own thing. And uh, it worked in my favor. Yeah, man. People saw, people saw my passion. People were excited that I was doing my own thing and want to try me out. People knew the results I was, I was providing. The communication skill was so, um, it fit the part. Mm hmm and I, just, I, I ran with it. And I'll, I'll give uh, Scott McCarthy a big shout out because he, um, um, he allowed me to open doors at a higher level. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was only doing personal training, my business part-time with my personal training, part-time with it. I was training class from 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then I was working at the um, the psychiatric hospital as a janitor because I need my health insurance. I was so fucked up I had no health insurance. And I was like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to do it full-time with my business. He said... The only advice I can give you is this. Put all your eggs in one basket, that way you don't have a choice. Never have a plan B. And the next day, I, 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 I told him I'm done. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I'm done today. I did it my last day. Yeah. And it's, ever since then, it's been uphill. Yeah, man. Not downhill, uphill. Well, man, I know uh, you got to get back to work, so we'll get yes, you sir. out of here. I appreciate you, brother. And, um, yeah, just shout out like anything like people can find you at or Oh yeah, so you can find me at um my Instagram, Kyle underscore fit oh sorry, Kyle underscore Smith underscore fit sixteen on Instagram. Facebook is Kyle Smith. Um inbox me, DM me any question you may have. Shout out to Beth for having me here, put me on the first time expressing myself at this level. Definitely a good experience. I really appreciate you bro. Hey man, thanks, thanks lot, for man. coming on, man. We really appreciate it. All right.